Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. It is October 18th, uh, 2018. We're getting a beautiful fall day. We've had a, a couple now and uh, we're supposed to get a, at least a week more, if not a couple weeks. They're forecasting of nice um, average or above average temperatures, which is nice because we've been in a bit of a, a cold, cold stint here. So I thought I'd take advantage of this and uh, take a little tour, let you see what it looks like here. Um, like I said, we've been hovering around the freezing mark for several weeks. It's just warmed up now, so let's have a look and see what's going on. So this bed here um, has a lot of hostas and ferns, um, and they've uh, pretty much died back now. I've planted, I think, over 100 tulip and daffodil bulbs in there, uh, but I still have this sedum. It's like I said, we've had some very cold weather, but what a tough plant these are. Beautiful. And there's the obedient plants that I planted earlier this, this year. There's another one in behind there. Looking real nice. And the hostas, sometimes I leave them up for the winter and sometimes if I get a chance, I'll cut them back. Um, most of my perennials I leave up over the winter, but hosta leaves, you can tell already, like they just get, they get wet, they get slimy. They're not fun to clean up in the spring, so <clears throat> I, I may get those cut back yet if I get a chance. There's my Wigilia, if you can see with the shadow there. Wigilia holds its leaves. And I usually go through in the spring. There's usually a ton still left on, so I quite often go through in the spring and knock them off just so I can see the new growth. I don't know if that's normal, if other people see that, but that's what I notice here. I have three more, if you can see them, three more there. And I have a couple in the front yard as well, and they all hold their leaves, so. I'm not sure, maybe they're normally an evergreen plant um, in warmer climates, but I leave the leaves on in the winter because I figure it probably offers some protection. But there you can see the daylilies, lilies, poppies. Everything's gone. The phlox is still trying hard here, but the seed heads are all on here. It's done blooming. Phlox is another real tough plant and it'll it'll probably hold some of that green color under the snow and be matted down come spring, but it'll come back. So I'll cut off before winter, I'll cut some of this dead bits off the top, the seed heads in that. And then I'll just have to kind of fluff it up and clean it up in the spring. Same with the dianthus here. Quite often just needs a little bit of fluffing in the spring. I'll take the seed heads off and otherwise it'll get left like that and just need a little fluffing up in the once spring comes. Um, I've also planted uh, tulips and daffodils through here. Got my rain barrel flipped over. There's my yew. One of my yew trees here. Daylily adds some nice sculpture until the snow gets it, so I'll leave it there. Some echinacea. They have great little seed heads on them, but I find if I leave too many up with the seed head, then I wind up with echinacea just absolutely everywhere. And sometimes it can encourage, as it drops the seeds, I find it encourages voles and mice and things to start to want to bed down and play in here and make a real mess of things. So I will come by here in the next little while and take the seed heads off. I know they're good for the birds, but they make a real mess here. That's the hydrangea I planted earlier. Seed heads are done. There's the other one. See the flowers. 
That's Agastashi in the back. Agastashi Felinicum. It's a mouthful. So normally a purple spire on there, but it's gone to seed. The same thing with that one. I'll leave a few for the birds, but I will cut most of that back here in the coming weeks. Or again, it'll just self-seed itself everywhere. Some more echinacea down there. And Speedwell. This looks so nice. These have a real fuzzy leaf. I think these are borderline hardy here. They say zone three. So it's the first year they've been in the ground, so we'll see. See how they do. I've got another box. Um, I think that has about a hundred tulips and daffodils in it that I'll finish. The cold weather got in here before I got those finished. And you can see where the nephophia came out there. There's a couple of big empty spots. And this has some phlox and delphiniums. And another yew there. Lilies. Some more Angustifolia fuenicum. Evergreens. You need those in this climate. I need more of those. You can see the trees have dropped their leaves. We have a little tiny rhododendron here. This has been here for several years. And I love the color the rhodod rhododendrons give off in the autumn. So it's a nice little tree just at the base of my steps here. You can see I have things piled up under the deck as that's where I'll keep them over the winter, just to store them out of the way and out of the snow. Hanging baskets, haven't cleaned them out yet, so they're still, still there. Uh, snapdragons, definitely done now. You can see up on the deck there, I have the Nephophia. I haven't uh, got it put away yet, but I've got it up in its pots there. And it'll get put away. I just thought I may as well leave it out for these warm weeks that we're supposed to be getting. Less time they have to sit in storage, the better. There's more rhododendrons there. And I'll try and leave those leaves piled up around the bases. I think it's never a bad thing to leave some, some insulation on the plants. Here's my little shade garden. Look at the beautiful flower heads on this hydrangea. Gorgeous. You see I've taken my little fountain and put it away for the winter. And that poor yew that was damaged last winter sitting there should be a little more protected here. Most things are done for the season. Um, I have a few borderline hardy plants in this bed so I've got some extra bags of mulch and I'll be just putting a little extra layer on once the ground freezes just to help protect them over the winter but up against the house here I'm hoping it'll be a little more sheltered and I can get them through the winter and enjoy them again so same story down this side bird bath is put away. The irises still look nice even after they've been frozen. Not like the lilies. And there's some asters there. Got the clematis with these beautiful fluffy seed heads. cut my peonies back. Um, you're supposed to cut them back and uh, take all the, the cuttings and that away. It's supposed to help um, prevent any disease. 
So that's one of my perennials that I cut back every year. So you can just see the little stems poking out. I'm a little concerned. As you can see, it looks like it wants to put new buds out. It's looked like that for about a month now, so hopefully that's normal and I've just never noticed it before on these on peonies, but some false turtle's head that I moved from the front so those are just some little starts that I just moved in there a month and a half or so ago so hopefully they get their roots down there and get strong before winter sets in that day lily was getting out of hand so I just cut it back when I was came through and took most of my most of my annuals out This is my pollinator area, and as you can see, I've let most of the trees' leaves here just fall where they can and put a little extra insulation, and of course, it'll feed the plants down there. So, most of the annuals out. I love the color of these hookahs. I'm not sure I'll get these to come back next year. They're not actually zone three, I think there's zone four here, but a lot of hookers are hardy and I find some plants are marked to zone four and I think they just were never tested anything colder. So they're there and we'll see if they come back next year. These are my hardy succulents. They stay out year round, year after year. Usually find them uh, labeled as hens and chicks. I believe they're a type of sempervivum. Not all of them, not all sempervivums are hardy this low, but there are a few kinds, so that's where I'd start if I want to try and grow some year round outdoors in the zone three. Beautiful plants. Look at those tight rosettes. They're green greener in the in the summer but they they change color now and I just love that that color change strawberries and you have the garden not too much happening here this is where I planted the garlic and I was trying to keep the leaves off they're not real thick, but keep the row of garlic uncovered until it freezes, but pretty hard to do with the wind, but no shoots coming up. So I think that's a good thing. I've never grown it before, so we'll see. I've got leaves on most of the beds, but not all of them yet. This bed still has my parsnip and when I took the tomatoes out I found another one there so remember if you remember from earlier I had a heck of a time getting parsnips to come up and start this year so let's see if I got anything out of it oh, not bad parsnips are a plant that like like a little cool weather it uh, sweetens them up yeah, see that one to get fresh seed next year but the, the cool weather will sweeten up the, the parsnip root and it's always good to leave them in let them get a few good heavy frosts if you can and they'll be delicious they're just fine down there in the dirt I mean if you had them in a pot maybe you'd want to pull them a little bit sooner than a hard frost but that looks good I'll have that for dinner In. Leaves are gone. These are high bush cranberry, which isn't a true cranberry. I believe it's a viburnum. So they get the, I don't know if you can see the little berries. And the birds will eat those, but uh, they usually wait till the, the spring. To eat them. Well, I did see 
when we got that real cold snap a few a few birds were eating the berries off them then too so I don't know maybe the cold makes them sweeter but and then I built myself a big cage of leaves here so I've been collecting leaves up from the local park and the yard and wherever I can get them and filling that up so got a good good supply started there so that's what my yards looking like in this mid-october day uh, I hope you enjoyed this little walk around I think it's always interesting to see especially in the different climates you know how things change and and what the differences are so we're uh, we're looking forward to hopefully a couple of weeks of warmer weather here and then the deep freeze is going to be hitting us soon so that's that's October for Zone 3 Saskatchewan Canada if you uh, enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up if you haven't done so already then hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll see you in the next one bye